yes hi guys so welcome to our first ever stack at Kampala base camp base camp one yeah so where we are going to dive into the stack net ecosystem uh, the main essence of the base camp is to onboard developers novice developers into the world of blockchain leveraging the stack net ecosystem the stack net is broad and yeah, we our sole main purpose is within this base camp. Someone comes from the ground and they can literally do do something with Starknet. They can build dApps, full fledged dApps running on Starknet. Yeah. So this is just let me present to us our. So this is our our. This is how uh, is let's go through the slides I prepared. And so we are stuck at Kampala and this is our base camp one. Yeah and so about about the base camp, the overall aim of the base camp is to Onboard novice developers, and the base camp is going to be a two month period. It's going to be both hybrid, it can be remote. Those who, who will attend remote shall be attending on the Google Meet, and our times are going to always be from Monday, Monday from 8, 8 p.m. East Africa time, then Wednesday as well, 8 p.m. East African time. And then Friday 8 p.m. East Africa time. Then our local meetups in regards to the base camp as well uh, will be institution based. For example, we are mostly targeting people at institutions of higher learning like universities. So there we shall be meeting locally. We shall be meeting physically on Saturdays from 10 a.m. East Africa time. A period of about two to three hours. So uh, it's, it's two months. I mean, as I said, it's going to be weekly six hour sessions. Uh, that means three days per week. Then the base camp is the mode of, of presentation is chat. It's going to be engaging. Then Q and A. Q and A. When they ask questions, you you are required to give answer, which will mount to points, and then homework. So homework in this it entails that we shall give, be giving you weekly take home assignments to assess your understanding of what of what of the concept co covered. Yeah. So. So the sessions are fundamentals of Starknet, fundamentals of Starknet, fundamentals of Starknet, deep dive in Starknet, fundamentals of writing Starknet smart contracts. Then as well, we are going to cover on developing the front end, and then Dojo. Dojo. Dojo is a gaming is a game which is built on a stacknet ecosystem so we are we are going to as well extensively cover dojo and then at the as the ultimate point of it all we we shall allow our novice students to develop projects to assess what they have learned in, in, in the two months so and that will be a project for anyone who likely who wants to graduate they have to come up with a project and which is fully running a prototype a prototype sort of and it has to utilize the stacknet it has to be written on stacknet smart it must utilize the stacknet smart, smart contract technology and it must be running uh, we felt that's the best way to clearly assess someone's understanding of the best camp. And then 
the, the project as well contributes to the points of which the points we shall that's what we shall base on to award the best the best students. So the instructors, it's me, Bossa Joseph. You can follow me on Twitter at Bossa Josh. And then Kakoza Vian. Kakoza is the Starknet Kampala team lead. And I'm the co lead of Starknet Kampala. So this is our journey. So the base camp is purposely for preparing you. And then the base camp project is for building. So after the base camp, before the base camp ends, the graduation project is the base camp project. Then after the base camp is done, we shall have a hackathon, stack at Kampala hackathon, basically to 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 implement everything that we've learned and there shall be cash prizes to be won. Yeah. So it shall be a hackathon. So as I said, S Camp is for preparing, so we shall we shall learn Cairo at Starknet and then you will earn points from the assignments. The build camp is to implement the various concepts learned. That's for training. And then the hackathon is for competition. Yeah, so after the base camp, we shall organize a hackathon. And there shall be cash prizes to be won. So our build camp starts in September 1st. On, on starts on step, September 1st. And you'll be required to work in teams to to develop the project. So as well, you will have access to mentorship support from experienced StackNet developers. Yeah. So and then our hackathon is to schedule to start on September 14th, and it will run for a period of one week. And during the hackathon, there shall be cash prizes to be won. So the criteria of our graduation is we award attendance, yeah, 25%. That means you have attended 25% of all the live classes. And then the best camp graduate, for you to graduate is that you have you must have attended more than 50% of the classes. Both they, they could be physical or remote. And then you must have scored 50% from the quiz questions. And then the best cap graduate, that's cream de la cream, you must have scored greater than 50%, must have attended half of the classes. It could be remote or local physical attendance. And then you must have scored 80% of the total questions from the quizzes. So the scoring system, every quiz which is attempted, you earn yourself points. And the quizzes, from the quizzes, you earn 15 points max. Three quizzes, there shall be three quizzes in total. Five questions each, one point per question. So then the project will carry 50 points. And then in a total, in case someone has earned all those points, they will amount to 65 points. It's what we shall use the point system to award the best students and then to find out the top graduates. So our session topics today is we are going to look at Cairo and then we are going to look at why we, we use StackNet and then if time allows we shall look at the smart wallets. So Cairo, Cairo's features. First and foremost, Starknet is Starknet is created by the Cairo VM, and the Cairo VM is 
its architecture is built on the Cairo programming language. Starknet is an L2. When I talk about an L2 is in that I mean that when I talk of an L2 I mean it's it's built on top of the Ethereum. Ethereum is a layer one. Yeah. So Ethereum has built this infrastructure but Ethereum in case you've worked with it it's it's having issues with scalability yeah and scalability is affecting things like speed yeah so that's why when you when when you write a dab smart contracts written on the EVM you may find they have issues of speed yeah because in 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 the in the beginning ethereum was designed to handle security and then settlement yeah but it was so realized that it couldn't handle all these three core functionalities at the same time so resulting in two high gas fees yeah and then scalability issues so that's why stacknet comes in Stacknet comes in implementing the stack technology. Now stacks, yeah, most L2s are built on two concepts. There is what they call the zero knowledge proof. Yeah, so they are there is there is what is called the validity rollups and the optimistic rollups. Yeah. Now stacknet is a validity rollup. In a validity rollup, I mean it uses computations to always verify. Yeah. So with Ethereum, computations are are based on are based on all nodes in the network. But with Starknet, it utilizes one node which acts as a verifier to verify transactions. In the whole network so in that there is no cross communication within a network so it relies on the verifier which is in one node to verify the computation it relies on the verifier which is in one node it doesn't need to utilize all the nodes in the network so it relies on one node to which generates computations to verify whether a transaction is is actually secure, whether it's doing what it's supposed to do, basing on the signature of the transaction. So, but Cairo, the Cairo VM is independent of the EVM, and that's what gives Stacknet a lot of power. Yeah, because it's independent of the Ethereum VM, unlike other L2s. And the Cairo VM is inspired by the Rust, Rust, the Cairo programming language. On which fuels the Cairo VM is inspired by Rust programming languages. And if you are to tinker the language, you find that that there are many similarities with the Rust programming language. But though there are some differences, and the difference lies in the simil in, in some of the similarities are in the ownership model. And then the other thing is that the stacknet can be used to build other other thing other than stacknet smart contracts. But though there are there are consequences. Because since Starknet was, the, since the Cairo, Cairo programming language was mainly designed for the Starknet smart contracts. So you'll find issues like optimization, memory issues, yeah. So as I said, Starknet is, the Cairo programming language is inspired by the Rust programming language 
and I just felt like I needed to introduce the Rust programming language to make it familiar to you. So in case you haven't mastered the Rust programming language, as part of the base camp, we are going to, we shall have a session where we shall give us a general introduction to Rust programming language. Because in case someone is from the Rust background, it's very easy for them to grasp may, may, to grasp a lot of of Cairo concepts, the Cairo programming language concepts. So in Rust programming language, one of the ways in which data can be organized is using structs. Yeah, and a struct is like an object, and a struct can have functions, and it can have traits, and then it can think of anything like an object. For example, in this example, my object is a rectangle, yeah, and a rectangle can have a height, it can have a width, yeah, and we have to define the the height, yeah. So we are assigning it to u64. In telling that it's from negative one to negative one twenty seven to negative two to one twenty six. Yeah. So meaning it's unsigned. No, I beg your pardon. When it's unsigned, it means that it's not handling the negative side. When it's signed, when it's signed, that means it's not it doesn't indicate you're not supposed to indicate the U. But when it's unsigned, you have to indicate the U64. And when you indicate U64, it means that we are indicating it's carrying 64 bits. Yeah? And then the width as well, we have given it U64. So then a trait, in most languages, a trait, in most languages, a trait is similar to an interface. In most languages, like TypeScript, a, a trait is similar to an interface and a trait helps us declare the functionalities of the object of a structure. So a trait can be used on as well on other on other things like enums, yeah. So so after after we've declared our traits we have to, to to actually come and expound the way how we can come up with functions. Yeah. So and functions of of our object in this case, which is a rectangle. So we have to first declare the function keyword. And then when you repre represent it with self, it means that self you are talking to is like a method, yeah. And then you have to you have to declare the return type, yeah. So is it so? In case here, since we have used the U64, so we are we are we are we are defining that it's going to return data in a 64 format. So that's a debris of of Rust programming language. But as I said, we are going to look at it in details in one of the sessions of the base camp. So then we have the StackNet smart contract. So the smart StackNet smart contract, it's it's pretty similar. As I said, StackNet runs on the Cairo VM, and the Cairo VM is fueled by the Cairo programming language. So in case you can write, one of the sessions we shall have is we are going to look at the Cairo programming language in details. Yeah, we are going to look at how to write programs on the Cairo programming language. But since this is a general introduction to StackNet, we are not going to cover it in this specific session. So, in as well as in StackNet, you have to you have to this is supposed to be trade. As well in StackNet, you have to you have to declare a trait. Now an interface. This is how an interface is represented in 
in, in StackNet. Now, when you follow this format, it's like you're writing a smart contract. Yeah? So you declare an interface because you will need to write functions. Yeah? And then we have the contract state. Now, everything in the smart contract is, is, is a state. Yeah? And then this state is what is recorded on the VM. Yeah? So, everything in the blockchain is represented in states. And you can write, it's, like, it's just like when you're writing APIs in the web tool. When you're making a post request, you are writing. But when you're making, when you write, when you, when you make a get request, if, for example, a fetch, you are just getting data. And you are not adding something on the... So in this case, if I'm writing a set, yeah, it's represented in terms of a set. A set consumes, it adds something to the state, to the contract state. Yeah? And then a get is just getting. It's not adding anything on the... It's not influencing the contract state. So that's why in the set, we have to make a reference to the cells in this case which is the self is representing the contract the module the specific module and we are going to look at it in detail in some sessions of the base camp and the contract is represented first with the mod keyword and then the name of the contract and then a contract has storage variables yeah and then these storage variables are are what storage variables are represented in the form of a struct, yeah? And this is what the state tries to modify. And then, but everything, we are going to look at it in detail. This is more of an introduction. So some of the resources we are going to look at is uh, we are going to use a lot the the Cairo language book. Yeah, it's it's at this URL link. And then as well we are going to look at the StackNet book. And some of the resources we shall be putting it in our telegram channel, which is that the central the decentral code, because this this base camp is organized in partnership with the central code. Yeah, the central code is on a mission to front Web3 development and onboard as many novice developers into the Web3. And then the other resource which we which I can add is the StackNet Discord channels and the Telegram channels. I'll be sharing them. So as I said, why Cairo? Why Cairo? Why are we using the Cairo programming language? Cairo is a programming language. It's designed for a virtual CPU of the same as the same name. As I said, it's the, it's the Cairo programming language that fuels that fuels the Cairo VM. So the unique aspects of this processor is that it was not created for the physical constraints of our world, but for photo cryptographic ones. Yeah? As I said, it's mostly handling crypto cryptographic computations yeah using the stack technology making it capable of efficiently proving the execution of any program running on it this means that you can perform time consuming operations on a machine you don't trust and check the result very quickly on a cheaper machine while Cairo Zero used to be directly compiled to Kazim Kazim The Cairo CPU assembly, Cairo 1 is a higher level language. It first compiles to Sierra, an intermediate representation of Cairo, which will compile later down to a self subset of Kazim. So Kazim is Cairo CPU assembly. The, the, the point of Sierra is to ensure your Kazim will always be provable even when the computation trends. So, 
Why, what to do with Cairo? Cairo allows you to compute trustworthy values on interested machines. One major use case is Darknet, a solution to Ethereum scaling. As I was stating, I emphasize Cairo, it improves Ethereum by scaling it. Ethereum is, just to introduce Ethereum, Ethereum is a decentralized blockchain platform that enables the creation of decentralized applications where every single interaction between a user and a DAP is verified by all the participants. But Starknet is a layer 2 built on top of Ethereum. Instead of having all the participants of the network to verify all the user interactions, only one node called the prover executes the programs and gener generates proofs that the computations were done correctly. Yeah, that's the whole basis of a stack technology using stacks. These proofs are then verified by an Ethereum smart contract requiring significantly less computation power compared to executing the interaction themselves. This approach allows for increased throughput and reduced transaction costs while preserving Ethereum security. So that's the entire, the sole purpose of the Cairo programming language and why it has to fuel the Cairo VM and why you need to, to learn StackNet. Because you'll find out that dApps which are written on StackNet smart, which, which you find out that Starknet smart contracts will will require less gas fees and there will be that point of scalability compared to dApps on other blockchains. So that some of the difference with other programming languages is that memory access is immutable. Yeah? So the memory model Starknet, once something is written in memory on on Cairo it's not, it cannot be changed, yeah? It cannot be changed. That's immutability. So expensive performance optimization. So since stacks, since the Cairo VM, since Cairo, since the Cairo VM needs something to verify, so in case, in comparison to other low level language, you'll find that optimization is really expensive compared to other languages. So those are, that's that's a very good introduction to the Cairo programming language and Starknet ecosystem. And part of this session we are going to have a quiz. Yeah. But before we go we go for a quiz, I just want to introduce some of the resources on the Starknet, in the Starknet ecosystem. So let me share some of these resources. So let me present. So Starknet is giving out a grant and part of this grant is you are required to develop an MVP as a proof of concept and you're supposed to use to, to use the Starknet technology and then as well you must have when uh, it's not a must but in case you've participated in builder programs, maybe base camps. That's why it's good to attend this base camp. And then, in case you have participated in some StackNet hackathons, you are at, you are at, you stand a high chance of being a recipient of this grant. Yes, I encourage members on this call to form teams and part of Part of the, our sole responsibility in the hackathon, while you are organizing the StackNet Kampala hackathon, is we want to come up with ideas and build up ideas so that we can be able to participate and receive 
this grant, to participate in this grant program. So we are going to go into the moment of quiz. But before we go for a quiz, we are going to take a 10 minutes break and so I'm going to generate some questions here as part of what we are looking at. So generating some questions. The first question is how what do you understand by Cairo VM? And then question two is let me stop sharing. Question two is what is the contract steps? document smart contracts and then the other question is what is what do you understand what is the question is how different is document how different is Cairo another question let me let it be an example is document an L2 or L1 so it's either yes or no so those are the three questions, and it's what we are going to pass on. It's what we are going to pass on to. So this is going to help you generate points. So this is going to help you generate points. This is going to help you generate points for in determining and it will aid us in determining the winner the graduates and it's what we shall base on to be like this person really understood of course as i said we shall as well have project building so thank you so much let's meet again on wednesday same time 8 p.m. East Africa time. So as I said, we are going to have, we shall have three sessions in a week on three days, Monday from 8 p.m. East African time. So there will be one to two hour sessions. And then on Wednesday same time, 8 p.m. East African time. And then Friday, 8 p.m. East Africa time. Thank you so much for being an awesome audience and let's keep it let's keep it strange let's keep stuck it strange thank you so in case of questions i see some people are sending in some questions in the chat yeah so for the interest of time we are going to I will be able to answer your questions in the beginning of the next session. That will be on Wednesday, 8 p.m. East African time, and we shall use the first first minutes to answer those questions. Thank you so much.